Well, hello everyone. Let's look real quick about setting up a new project. I'm gonna share my screen with you guys real quick. Okay, so here's my Jira, but this is what your project will look like when you have nothing in it, right? This is the first time you've created this project. It's completely empty. I need to start filling up your backlog with uh, items. So the first thing I'll do is you can either go to create up here and it'll bring up a, a model, click on it. Yep, you bring up a model and it tells you the project, the type, issue type could be either a story, a task, a bug, or an epic based on how I have this project configured. You put a summary, you put your status and all that. And you can create it from here. I won't do it this way. I'll do it the shortcut way, which is how I want to work right now. So once you go to backlog, then in your backlog, you'll see create issue and it'll automatically choose for you a story, which is this green icon, but you could always change it to become a task or a bug. What's the difference between a task and a story? So the story is like a bigger holding space for all of what you're gonna do. So you could have a story that breaks down into different tasks. So let's say you have a story and the story requires you to build this part of the UI first and do this other part of the UI and do this calculation. You could have one story and then break down the different steps of it into a task. Or you could have it all as an acceptance criteria in the story. So it's it's a little bit fuzzy as to when to use a story versus a task, but your team will help you decide that. So in this case, we're going to call this subscribe to the um, low balance alert. Let's say I'm building a front end where the person can go into the system and they can say, if my balance is low, then send me a notification. I want to be notified that my balance is gotten too low. So that's what this is called. And as you can see, Jira will automatically give it a number, which in my case, it'll be the name of the project and then starts incrementally counting the number. This is the first story, so it's gonna be called um, FE1, right? And let's say that we wanna say what this story does. Now, no, most of you jump in and start saying, as a user, I want this so I can have that and blah, blah, blah. All, all the things I've taught you how to write user stories, right? But remember that you're gonna be sharing this with a lot of people. Some people are at different levels of understanding. And if you have a large project, there are so many stories and even the product owner can get turned around as to what they're looking at when so they can approve it, right? So help people, help them by giving them a little bit of a precursor as to what is this story doing? So we could start with this. This story handles the, I'll call it, um, in, in my world, this means something, right? Fin low balance alert and allows the user to subscribe to an alert when their balance has fallen below a certain threshold. Right? Yeah, okay. So that's that's what it is, right? So you can also add, maybe in my case, I'd say this will be triggered the uh, next day after we run the nightly uh, nightly ingestion. How do you spell injection? I think it's a J. No, not injection, Jira. <laughs> injection. <laughs> Oh my God, y'all are seeing the real life stuff. Okay, what is nightly ingestion? Don't worry about it. It's just a process that we run. It's like a cron job that all banks do this, right? Every bank, that's why when you, you look at your balance like on a Friday, it doesn't update until the Monday because sometimes they have to do the weekend, right? Where nobody's at work over the weekend. So it takes a longer time. So every night there's a process that goes through for banks to be able to reconcile all of the accounts that were the transactions that were done for the day, like scheduled transfers, like payments. And, you know, you just schedule a transfer to pay your credit card. You don't see that updated right away till the next day, things like that. So that is what we call nightly ingestion. And this is saying that this thin low balance alert, which is a low balance alert, will be triggered when we're running that nightly job, that's all it's saying, right? So when I do that, I, it helps 
whoever picks up the story to have a little better understanding before they jump into the acceptance criteria to know what it is that we're talking about. Now, because of experience, I know that even when I write the clearest, easiest to follow story, there's always something. Somebody have some concern about something, you know, we're missing something. It always, something always has to be discussed, right? So I normally just leave the same note panel right here, this purple one, I go insert, and I call this my refinement discussion. So this is the section where we will leave for any open items that will come up when we do our refinement of this of the story. So one of the things that could probably come up are questions that I actually have for the developers. I could put it here too. So for example, should we accept decimals in the amount field? Okay, so let me show you what we've done. So we've actually filled out the rest of this. I realized that my recording had stopped, so I'm just going to show you what I did. Um, so we last time we talked, we were here. So we finished out the user story. As a banking user, I want to be able to subscribe to a low balance alert so that I can be notified when my account falls below a certain balance. And I have the UX design, the Figma design, like I was saying, I'd like to put a link to the Figma files, or if you're using any other tool that's an online tool, you can put the link here, or you can have one of those um, add-ons where you can actually put the link in and it actually shows you the design within Jira. So you don't even have to leave the tool. Then you have the acceptance criteria. So in some versions of Jira, the acceptance criteria is its own section, but in others, it's just um, the one description section. I think I might need to upgrade to get that. So you can still just type in acceptance criteria and you put in the rest of it. So here we have, given that I am a online banking user and I am on the web experience and I access my notification preferences from the bell icon on the overview screen, when I click on the gear icon, then I will land on the manage notification screen. I will see the following, the title, the subtitle, the description, the input field, whether it has a default value or not, what the placeholder text is, the channel options and how they can choose them, right? So a save button and a cancel button. Now, one thing to note here, you're not going into a lot of detail about the color and if it's on the left side of the screen or the right side, or any spacing specifications, because all of that would be already a part of your design system. Hopefully you're working with UX designers who already have this mapped out. And even if you're not, if the system you're building already has like a pattern that they follow, you just need to say what is on the screen and the front end developers will figure out how to make it look like the other screens that already exist. So you don't have to spend too much time in the intricacies of padding and spacing and RGB colors and all that stuff, because it's more than likely gonna be a part of a system already. All right, <clears throat> so you just need to focus on what should be shown and any functionality behind it. Now I could get much more granular in this user story and, and explain exactly what happens when you click on email you have had to have an email address already registered it's going to send the, e the primary email address that you have or if you click on text message or push notification you would have had to have a registered phone in order to get that or if you don't have a registered phone on on profile then we send you a link to the profile and then you go to the profile create that um, put in your phone number and then you can come back to notification and choose push or a text. I could go into all that intricacies, which in the real world you will have to, but for the purposes of just explaining to you how we do user stories, I'll leave that part out for now. And then we have our error states, which you could get into more details about the error. Like if you try to, um, if you try, if you set up a push notification and then you change the phone number or remove the phone number, then now you'll have an error to say we can't send you the push because we don't we no longer have a phone number on file, right? Things like that could happen and you need to get into lots of detail with your technical team to make sure you cover all of those scenarios in your uh, error states. As long as the client or as long as your PO is willing to cover those, because some errors are like, it's such an edge case, we'll, we'll deal with that some other way. It's okay if we just show a message we don't want to, you know, route them to some other place and do all that. We don't 
will take on the risk that it's not something to solve for right now. So even though you could, you know, you could be very, very thorough, we don't want to spend all our development efforts on low, low likelihood errors, right? So you also have to consider that and talk with your team, talk with your, your client or your product owner to make sure you're not um, building in functionality that they're not ready to, to, to solve for yet. Okay. So yeah, so that's what your story should look like. All right. And again, when you go to workflow, you'll go here and you can create your own workflows. I have a video on creating workflows and you can change this to become maybe in BA review or um, BA analysis or something like that. And then when you've done your refinement and you're finished, then you'll have to say ready for estimations or something like that, right? So you can, you know, you can be creative with your workflow and you can always flip back to your backlog and be able to see um, the stories. Now, if you had a sprint, you could drag the story into the sprint and that's a way you could, you know, start the clock as to um, what you're gonna build in the next sprint. I won't go into that in this uh, video because I have a separate video about sprints, I have a video about fixed versions, I have a video about workflows, so go check those out and I'll make some more videos for you on more details around how to create your user stories in Jira. Thank you guys and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye bye. Hey, before you go, I want to invite you to the Global BA Stand-Up, which we're going to be having the first Monday of every month, starting this Monday, December 4th, 2023. So you can come to the Global BA Stand-Up and we'll talk for 30 minutes about how we are growing our careers around the world as business analysts. This will be a free event. The information will be in the link below. So you can check out the link below and it'll take you to the registration form. It's going to be great. I look forward to seeing you on Monday and every first Monday thereafter for the Global BA Stand-Up. See you there.